Welcome back. This is template tutorial series video number seven, and this time we look at how to set up VE Pro. Let me first start by saying this. I've set up VE Pro on a number of computers, and while there are a few general rules that can help optimize performance, I've also found that some of what I'm about to suggest is highly dependent on which libraries you use and how exactly you use them. For my own usage, each VE Pro instance will normally play a maximum of four or five complex instruments at one time. By complex, I mean instruments that stream a lot of simultaneous voices from the sampler, like libraries that use advanced legato scripts, and also use multiple microphone positions. In addition, there will be a number of less demanding instruments streamed by the same instance. Having divided workload like this seems to give me the best results but I admit it takes a bit of planning and possibly a bit of experimentation too. So keeping all of that in mind, here are the settings I use for VE Pro. First under multiprocessing, here I take the total number of CPU cores available and divide that number by four. On this computer, that's 16 divided by four. This is the number of CPU cores used by one of your VE Pro instances. On other PCs, I use the same formula although I always make sure to have at least two cores assigned per instance, as I've found that otherwise I can sometimes push a single core too far. I use eight MIDI ports per V Pro instance, and each instance has 128 audio output channels, giving me up to 64 stereo returns in total. I already partially covered how I group instruments into V Pro instances in video number five. But to go over it briefly once more, what I do is I split each orchestral section into subsections. Strings, for example, are split into two, with high strings in one instance and low strings and string ensembles in another instance. Let me just quickly pull up a view of my sample server PC. Now, where I have very large numbers of instruments per orchestral section, like with percussion or with ethnic instruments, I've split them into three different instances. Choosing to split them like this allows me to spread the workload between these instances, as each of them has different CPU cores assigned to them. This also makes navigation inside of EPRO instance easier, because there are few tracks to scroll through. Let's switch to Cubase briefly. Here, the VEPRO instances live inside the instrument track, which you can find in the Devices menu or by hitting F11. Here are all of the VEPRO instances. Let's open one and look at the settings. My setup uses a VE Pro buffer size of one. Now that's actually a multiplier that uses the buffer size set inside Cubase, which in this case is 256 samples. This allows me to do pretty dense orchestrations with lots of instruments, while also having the entire mastering chain of relatively resource hungry plugins active while I am composing, as I often like to mix while writing. In much lighter projects, I can drop the buffer size down to 128 samples and still have everything performing well. As I mentioned earlier, each VE Pro instance uses eight MIDI ports. For example, here are the high strings. First violin soloists use MIDI port one. First violin sections use MIDI ports two and three. Second violin soloists use MIDI port four and so on. Each instrument also has a MIDI channel assignment. As you can see, most have consecutive numbers, and when they do, then the MIDI channel assignment in contact is set to Omni. But there are exceptions. Like for example here, we have the first violins from Berlin Strings main library. I've set the MIDI channels to all. That's because inside this contact instance, I'm using several different patches, and each of them has their own MIDI channel. To access these patches, I'm using expression maps in Cubase that switch the MIDI channel based on which articulation is activated. For more detail on how this is achieved, you can refer to video number six, which talks about expression map setup. The reason for assigning numbers in VE Pro rather than inside contact is that it's easy to change these assignments and add new instruments between others, as VE Pro allows for very quick reassignment of consecutive channel numbers. I don't know if you can make it out, but as this little tooltip tells you, if you select a bunch of channels and hold the ALT key while assigning the channel number, then the selected channels will all get consecutive numbers, starting with your selection. 
The alternative of having to switch to each individual contact instance to change channels is rather slow and unpleasant. Switching back to Cubase for a second. Each MIDI track needs to be pointed to the correct VE Pro instance, and also the correct MIDI port. Once that's done, you'll also need to make sure you're using the right MIDI channel, which you can assign in this field. There's one exception. If the expression map used by this particular track already defines which MIDI channels are used, then you can completely ignore the MIDI channel field here. Just like when assigning MIDI ports and channels, you can quickly and easily give your instruments consecutive audio outputs by selecting them all at once, holding down the ALT key, and then clicking on the output field. Once you're done with assigning outputs in VE Pro, it's time to connect them to audio tracks in Cubase. To do so, find the audio outputs for your VE Pro instance in the instrument track in Cubase. Toggling these outputs creates new audio tracks for them. Let me switch a couple of them on. These audio tracks are where the incoming audio arrives from VE Pro. For more details about my strategies for dealing with the audio from this point onwards, you can refer to video number 5, Tracks and Groups. VE Pro version 6 introduced a new feature. It's now possible to disable each individual instrument channel. One way to do this is to right click on the instrument and choose Enable or Disable. Or you could also hit Ctrl E while the channel is selected. You could also set up automation to control enabling and disabling remotely via Cubase. For that you can use automation mapping accessed via the View menu. Disabling instruments frees up all of the resources used by that instrument channel, including any inserts. Disabling unused instruments could allow you to either lower your buffer settings for more responsive playback, or you could put together very large VE Pro projects far bigger than your computer is capable of handling at once, and then only use the portion that you need. In other words, if you make use of disabled channels, you could have fewer computers in your rig and you could use them more efficiently. Couple more small things to mention. First, you have to use an Ethernet connection with at least gigabit speeds. That means having to use gigabit capable network cards and also your Ethernet cable should be at least category 5E or higher. Second, using static IP addresses for all of your computers is a good idea. The procedure for that differs per operating system, so I won't go into that here. But there are plenty of good resources available on the internet on how to set up static IP addresses for your local area network. So that's how I go about setting up VE Pro on my system. However, let me point out again that when you're planning your VE Pro setup, it's really important to consider your available computer resources, but also the number and the resource demands of the instruments that you're planning to group together to form your instances. In my experience, optimal performance comes from a smaller number of instances where workload is relatively evenly distributed between them. But depending on your specifics, you may find a slightly different solution is more suitable for you. My suggestion would be to experiment a little. V Pro has a few clever features, for example you can copy all of the channels from one instance and paste them in another, thus quickly rearranging your entire VE Pro project. That's a nice method for some quick experiments, and it might provide you with the best solution for your own setup. That's all for this video. In the next couple of videos, I will talk about something that many of you have asked me about, that is how to set up Lima. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.